Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single one of those problems. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number one through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 174. Please turn to it. Page number 174. The very first problem that you see there in the second column. Problem number 159. Problem 159 is a pretty, pretty straightforward geometry question. Here is the picture that is given to us. It's the trapezoid, as you can see. And we are told that A to B, A to B, we are told, is 13. We are further told that A, this distance right here, is 2. So let's give it a name here. Let's call it A to D. And we have A, B, C, and D there. We are also told that this distance is 5. So far, so, so good. Let's see what we can do here. And the question is very straightforward. We simply have to figure out the area of this trapezoid. So let's find out what we can do. Area of the trapezoid. Well, first thing first, if this side is, if A to B is 12, oh sorry, if A to B is 13, and we are told that B to C is 5, then what we are dealing with in triangle, triangle, so then we are, what we are dealing with here is that the triangle ABC, ABC is what is known as a 5, 12, 13 triangles. In other words, if one side is 5, if other side is 13, this side would have to be 12. So A to C is 12. And if of course, and of course it's not a big deal if you didn't know this thing, you will simply apply the Pythagorean theorem and you will figure out that this side is 12. You will simply have 13 squared, which is the hypotenuse, equals 5 squared plus x squared. And you will see that when you solve it, x squared would be 169 minus 25, which happens to be 144, and therefore x turns out to be the uh, x, which will be the 12 a to c here, which are, which is which is which is 12, and that would be your x. But we didn't have to, we, you you wouldn't have had to do all of this thing if we had known this concept of 5, 12, 13, a concept of 5, 12, 13, a triangle, a 5, 12, 13 triangle. That is a concept that we learned long time ago in our geometry tutorials. And if you're interested in watching that video, just type in just type in geometry geometry for GMAT geometry for GMAT day 5 and 6 watch these two videos geometry for GMAT day 5 and 6 and and uh, you will learn that concept of 5 12 13 along with some other stuff there anyway enough of that so that part is done this this side is 13 and therefore the bottom is 12 now let's break it up into two parts here we're going to have a bottom part here which is a, which is a rectangle this rectangle is pretty straightforward this is simply 2 by 12 the rectangle is 2 by 12. In other words, the area of the rectangle, the area of the rectangle is simply 24. The area of the rectangle is 2 times 12. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now let's look at the tri triangles B, D, B, E. Triangle D, B, E. We're done with this part. We no longer need this part. We're done with it. Now we have to figure out the area of D, B, E. Triangle D, B, E. The B is D to E is same as A to C, which is 12. Since, since B to C, we were told, was 5, and this side is 2, so this side is 2, which means B to E would have to be 3. B to E would have to be 3 because we were told that B to C is 5. Let's put this 5 on the outside so we can see it properly. This entire distance we were told 
is 5 and we are told that this distance is 2 right here so whatever the distance is from A to D which is same as C to E which is 2 which is 2 if this is 2 then this would have to be five, uh, 3 that's it we are done so in, 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 in triangle D, D, E the base is 12 so it's one half base which is 12 which is same as this guy right here and the height which is from B to E which is 3 we are done Divide both sides by uh, divide top and bottom by two, and we get six here. Six times three is eighteen. So that area of this thing is eighteen. Area of the other guy we found out was two times twelve, so it's twenty-four plus eighteen. Is that is the area of the trapezoid? The area of the trapezoid is simply the area of the bottom part, which was twenty-four, the rectangle, plus the triangle, which is found out is six times three, which is eighteen. And that's it. We're done. We know twenty-four plus twenty. Would have been 34, 44, so it's going to be 42. It's going to be 42 because we're not adding 20, we are adding 18. That was very straightforward, very simple. The answer is C. Let's move on to the next problem, number 160. If you're weak in geometry, if you're weak in geometry, if you feel that you have forgotten a lot of the basic things that you learn in geometry courses many, many moons ago, then it's a good idea actually to review some of those concepts. Just as I said, go to my uh, uh, channel there and you will find there a whole bunch of geometry videos. Just type in geometry for GMAT day one, day two, all the way up to, it goes all the way up to day number 125. There are 125 videos dealing with different concepts of geometry. Number 160. In number 160 we are told that x, the nth, the nth term in a series, we are told, is equal to 2 times x, 2 times x n minus 1, which means this term, nth term, is 2 times the previous term, n minus 1 would be the previous, if this is n, then n minus 1 is the term that is before that, so it's 2 times the previous term, plus, or rather minus, minus half of the terms that comes before that for all n for all n greater than or equal to 2 let's see if you understand it one more time so what this tells is that if you if you're looking for the fifth term if you're looking for the fifth term the fifth term is going to be 2 times the fourth term n, n minus 1, so it's going to be 5 minus 1, n is equal to 5 here if you're looking for the fifth term. So it's 2 times, well let's not put the 2 times like this, it's going to confuse people. 2 times the fourth term, because we're looking for the fifth term, so it's going to be 2 times the previous term, minus half of the term that came before that, which is 5 minus 2, which is going to be the third term. So one more time, fifth term is going to be 2 times the previous term, minus half of the term before that. That's all it says. And the question is very straightforward. The question is, the question is this. We are told that if, if x naught is equal to, this is read as, this guy is read as x naught, n-a-u-g-h-t, x naught is equal to 3, and if x1, first term is equal to 2, then how much is x3? Let's find out, shall we? Now before we can figure out the value of x3, we have to first figure out the x2 because we have we know x0, we know x1, we want to find out x3, but how much is x2? Even though they do not ask for it, but we need this information first before we can figure out x3. Because x3, the third term that is, the third term in the series, is going to be 2 times the second term minus half of the first term. But we know the first term, first term equals 2. How much is the second term? We need to find that out first before we can worry about that. So let's do it. Let's find the second term. Second term would be, why don't we do it up here, right underneath it, it'll be easier. Well, maybe we can continue here because there is no room in there. So the second term is going to be 2 times the term before it, which is 2 minus 1, which is going to be 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1, which is the first term, which we know the value, first term is 2, minus 
half of the term before the before that one. So it's se second term is two times the previous term minus half of the term before that, which is half of the term before the first term is the, is x naught. Half of x two minus two, which is x naught. So it's going to be two times two minus one, which is the first term minus half of the x naught. By the way, before we forget it, I keep using this word here. This word here, not, it's not a big deal. If you if you're a native speaker, it's not a big deal. But in the event that uh, in the event that we need some help with it, it's not, and this is something we mean we learn as a vocabulary words on day number seventy four. Vocabulary day seventy four seventy four, and the reason why we're making too much fuss about this thing is not because of the word not, but along with that word not, we learn. Another word on the same day, and this this word is a tricky word here. This word is tricky word because it the meaning of the word, meaning of this word depends on how it is being pronounced. If you pronounce that word as a sifr, as a sifr, then it's an Arabic word which simply means zero. Zero. It's an Arabic word, as I said. But if you pronounce that as cipher, it has a different meaning. Cipher and decipher is are different concept than simply pronouncing it as a cipher. Again, if you're interested in learning all the intricacy of the of the word and and improving your vocabulary, you can avail yourself of those videos. They are there. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day number seventy four. The video will pop right up and learn it. Anyway, let's finish up our story here. We're taking too long here. So second term is going to be two times the first term. Two times the first term. Two times the first term, which we are told is two. The first term is two minus half of the x naught which we are told is 3 x naught we are told is 3 that's it we're done so it's 2 times 2 which is 4 so x2 is equal to 4 minus 3 halves minus 3 halves 4 of course is simply 8 halves 4, 4 is made up of 8 halves so it's 8 halves minus 3 halves which is 5 halves so that's it, we found the x2, x2 equals 5 halves. We need this information here, so we can put it in here. It is 5 halves. And now we can worry about x to the third. So let's do that here. So now instead of, instead of erasing anything here, let's do the, uh, now we can figure out the third term here, x, x third, right here. So x third is going to be 2 times 3 minus 1, which is the term before here, which is the second term. As you can see, 3 minus 1 is 2, is the second term. 2 times the second term, which we know is this guy right here, 5 over 2, which we'll, we'll get to in a second, minus half of the term before that, which is 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is x naught, which is why we need the value. In order to figure out the x3, we need the x2. And this should have been 2 minus 2, is it? And minus 2. Well, this is the third term we're looking for. This is not. This is this is three. It's not x naught. It is three minus two, which is the first term. Which is the first term. The the third term is equal to two times the previous term, minus half of the term before that. Half of the term before that is not x naught. It is x one. Because we're interested in x, in the third term. In order to figure out the third term, we need to use the value of the second term and the first term. Do you understand? Right there. That's the first term. Three minus two is one. So let's do that here. So 2 times 3 minus 1, which is x, 2 times x to the second term, second, 2 times second term, minus, I'm going to erase it, this is getting too crowded, this is getting too silly, it's getting too crowded. So it's 2 times 2 minus 1, which is second term, minus half of 3 minus 2, which is the first term. 2 times second term, we just found out is 5 halves minus half of the first term, and the first term was 2, I believe. x1 was 2, we are told. So these two is going to cancel out. These two, oh, this is very simple. These two are going to cancel out, these two are going to cancel out. This is 5 minus 1, which is just 4. The third term equals 4. The value of the third term is simply 4. The answer is C. The answer is C. That was, I'm not going to start a new page. That was the end of that. And we're going to stop right here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.